Learn man, tame the self. This is from the Dhammapada, which is a book of uh, uh, Proverbs. And it's actually uh, um, uh, a sort of uh, a book with many of these kind of statements. But let, let us now take a look at why, why, why this, uh, what this, the meaning is of these uh, words. So let us talk first about uh, no, our novice Pandita. And in the meantime, I will show you several pictures of novices. Uh, some are younger than others. <laughs> some of you may know this little fellow. He's a, he's a Thai American kid. Anyway, um, the story of uh, Samanera, the Samanera or the novice Pandita begins when he was uh, uh, still uh, a very little, very small kid. At that time, the Venerable Sariputta, who was uh, the attendant, was a, one of the uh, foremost disciples of the Buddha, foremost students of the Buddha. He uh, came, he went to, to see the lay people every day because in the morning, the monks, they go for alms round. That means they walk uh, with a black bowl or some other kind of bowl, maybe a bowl made from clay or some other material, dark material. And then they walk into a local village or city to obtain alms or obtain food. And then the, the Venerable Sariputta always passed this house in which a little kid lived. And this child was very eager to always give to the Venerable Sariputta. He always came out of the house and then he would give food to the Venerable Sariputta. And this is not a, a very strange thing. If you live in Thailand as a monk and you go for alms round, that means you go with living, you go and walk with your bowl and you go and you walk and you receive food from the people in the local village or the local neighborhood then you will often see the sight of uh, houses which have little children waiting in front. And then when you come there, they will run into the house and they will tell their mother, the monk has arrived, the monk has arrived. Prama Leo, Prama Leo. And this is a very common sight in Thailand because many children like to do the giving uh, to the monks just giving a little bit of rice or giving a little bit of banana or whatever. And this activity is often very interesting for children because uh, of many reasons, but uh, uh, it, it is uh, exciting. And uh, in this case also Venerable Pandita very much like to give. In fact, if we go back a little bit earlier in time, there were already many signs that this child was very special because the mother, when, when she had become pregnant of him, she immediately had the feeling that she wanted to, to join in with giving to the monks, giving food to the monks. So this is a, a common belief in Buddhism that uh, a mother will show certain signs with regard to the nature of the child that she's pregnant with. So if your mother uh, maybe had certain uh, feelings or certain intentions when you were born, when you were in her womb, then you might want to inform about that because it might tell you something about yourself you didn't know. Yeah. In the case of, for example, the deputy abbot of our temple in Thailand, uh, Lompard Datachivo, he, when he was still in his womb, in his mother's womb, his mother always had the feeling she wanted to meditate on the full moon day. And uh, the other, uh, the other uh, days, which we call one pra, the other holy days of Buddhism. So she always had the feeling that she wanted to meditate on those days. And uh, because of that, uh, this is maybe because in the, there was, uh, Lumpad Tativo was is somebody who's very much likes to meditate on the full moon day. So 
this was something that very much connected with his mother and his mother immediately felt that when then she became pregnant of him so this uh, story starts like this and then every time the novice pandita saw the venerable sariputta he was so happy to give to give food to him and the venerable sariputta knew that this child was very special but when a child is ready to, to join the spiritual life, it's up to the parents and up to the child. It's, it is not, uh, um, uh, it's not uh, very much... Uh, it's a bit of a strange tradition for many Western people to see children ordaining as monks. But we have to understand that in Thailand and in other places in Asia, uh, many monasteries are very good places to receive your education and they are also safe for the child. So that's why uh, this was, uh, is, has been a tradition since the time of the Buddha for children to ordain. Uh, but uh, there must always be enough teachers to take care of them. So this is kind of a, like a rule. So um, in this case, the novice, uh, the Pandita, who was, uh, who was not a novice yet, Pandita, he wanted to become a monk himself. He told his parents that he wanted to. Because every day that he gave food to the Venerable Sariputta, he was so happy and uh, he wanted to become a monk himself. So uh, when he had this intention, his mother knew that he, she, that she couldn't change his mind <laughs> and she didn't want to probably because she also felt devoted to Buddhism but it's always difficult for a mother to lose her child in this way but you could say that in some way it's not only a loss because the child can do a lot of good for the family when he grows up to become a wise monk so even in my case, for example, my parents at first had a lot of difficulty when I ordained. They allowed me, but they had found it hard. But later on, when I had received some training as a monk, and they showed how happy I was, and I mean, they, they saw how happy I was, and they saw how much I could do for other people, then they were very much okay with that. Then um, uh, the novice then ordained, Pandita ordained as a monk, as a little monk, as a novice. And from the moment he ordained, he was very much interested in meditation. It may be surprising to some of you why a child would be interested in meditation, because most of the time we see children run around we see young children run around and it seems very unlikely that any of those children would be interested in meditation. But uh, it's not always a contradicting thing. For many children, they can be very wild, but it doesn't mean they cannot meditate. It's really something to do with the mind. When we run around, when we jump around, we, we are very agitated and we feel very restless, but a child is not like that. For a child, it can be very different. And children are known to meditate actually very easily. Why is that? Because children, when they meditate, they are more natural in their way they guide their mind. They are more natural in the way they, they find softness of the mind their concentration is just the right of soft, the kind of right soft uh, dedication of the mind that is needed for meditation. Whereas we adults, we tend to push our mind a lot. We tend to force our mind a lot. Because of that, we are not able to meditate as well as children do. But unfortunately, most children are not very disciplined. So even though they might be good at meditating, they are not able to continue the practice so well as adults are. In this case, the novice Pandita liked to meditate a lot. He liked to meditate a lot. And he would often uh, go uh, 
with the Venerable Sariputta on Elm's Round. So when the Venerable Sariputta went for Elm's Round, went to, to, the, to, the, to the village, to the city for Elm's, to, for the people to give food to him, he would uh, follow. And uh, one day when he was following the Venerable Sariputta, he asked uh, some questions. So here you can see some pictures of the alms round as monks go along the houses or in this case alongside the street and the people give food to the monks. Here you can see a novice going for alms round. And the novice Pandita, he asked questions. As he was walking with the Venerable Sariputta, he pointed to some workers, some farmers who were working in the field, and they were making these little, little, these little holes in the in the ground, and they were trying to to make it into a very long uh, uh, room space in the ground where the water could come through. And uh, he asked the Venerable Sariputta, what are they doing? And the Venerable Sariputta, they said, they are making a, a place for the water to come through, like a sort of irrigation, uh, like a sort of irrigation canal, a little canal for the water to come through, for the farmers to, to keep their land uh, wet for the rice to grow on. So this was a practice in those days. Irrigation was commonly used. So the, the novice Pandita asked about that. And the Venerable Sariputta, he answered him. And then the novice Pandita was so surprised that people were able to control the water by just making, uh, digging a canal they were able to bring the water in all directions. But if they can bring the water in all directions, then we should also be able to guide our mind in all directions. We will be able to guide our mind inside. We can also guide the mind in meditation, the Venerable Pandita thought. And then they came, they walked a little farther and then they came to see some other, they saw some other artisans or some workers who were, who were making things out of wood. Actually, they were making things, uh, they were fletching things, which means that they were making arrows. They were arrow makers. And they had to bend the wood to make the arrow. They had to to, 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 to form the wood, to form the material to make the arrow. So when they did that, uh, they saw that they were making the, the material straight. And uh, Venerable Pandita asked the Venom, uh, the novice Pandita asked the Venerable Sariputta, what are they doing? And he said, they're making the, the arrow straight so they can be used, used to hunt or used in warfare. And the, the novice Pandita, he was surprised to see that they could make arrows that straight. Then he thought to himself, if they can make the arrow straight, we should also be able to make the mind straight. That when you make the mind straight, we make sure that it's whole, that it's complete. We make sure that the mind is focused, but using the soft focus of meditation. Then they walked a little farther, and then they were they saw artisans making things out of wood, out of wood, making wheels, making other kinds of materials, maybe doors or windows. And all of that they were making out of wood. And uh, again, the novice Pandita asked about that, and he and he got the answer from the Venerable Sariputta. And the uh, novice Pandita, he was surprised that there were so many things you could make out of wood. And then he thought to himself, if there are so many things you can make out of wood, there must also be many things we can do with our mind. 
because our mind is also like a sort of material, but it's a very, uh, very subtle material. And we can make something out of our mind. And having thought about all these things, this was a very philosophical child. Having thought of all these things, you suddenly became very peaceful. It became very clear inside and a brightness began to shine inside the meditative brightness. And then he asked the Venerable Sariputta, please, sir, can I go back? And this was very uncommon because normally when they went for alms round, when they went to, uh, to receive food from the lay people in the houses, they would always he would always follow him everywhere he would not just leave him behind but in this case venerable sariputta knew that the novice pandita was about to have a breakthrough in meditation so he understood immediately because the venerable sariputta was very wise and therefore the novice went back to the monastery and he continued his practice in meditation. And it said that uh, he needed a bit more time to achieve enlightenment. Because even a child can attain enlightenment, according to Buddhism. He needed a little bit more time. After he had come back from the alms round, he needed a little bit more time to meditate. And, but the Venerable Sariputta was about to come into his hut to give food. And it said that the Buddha knew that uh, the Venerable Sariputta was about to interrupt the meditation of the novice Pandita. So at that moment, the Buddha interrupted the Venerable Sariputta. He tried to prevent the Venerable Sariputta from entering the hut where the novice Pandita was staying. And as he was interrupting him, he said to him, uh, he asked him several questions. And as he was asking him questions about uh, philosophical questions, about the sort of things that the Buddha had taught, he was like reviewing his teachings. And the Venerable Sariputta was therefore distracted and did not continue his, his um, he did not continue in the hut of the novice. And at that time, the novice became enlightened. Uh, because of the wisdom he had attained and uh, because of all the efforts in his meditation. And it's sad that uh, because his enlightenment was so special, because he was still so young, that even the sun and the moon, they respected it. And the sun would come up later and the moon would come, would also be at a different time. It was such a special moment for that reason. This story shows that, uh, that there is some truth in the questions that the novice Pandita asked. He said that there is, he asked about the, the way people perform outside all, all sorts of occupations. If you compare it with the modern world, we make all sorts of objects. We make all sorts of things. We built huge buildings. For example, this building is called the La Sagrada Familia. In the, some of you may know it well if you are a Spanish speaker. This is in, in Spain, uh, it's in Barcelona. And uh, it's supposed to be like this in the future. Originally designed by the, the, art, the, the uh, architect Gaudí. And this is designed to be the largest largest church of Spain, the pride of Spain. But uh, as with all of these great things, it takes a lot of time to build. In the same way, when the novice Pandita saw the Fletchers fletching the arrows, and he saw the artisans making all sorts of things out of wood, he knew that there's a lot of things we can make, a lot of things we can create. But there's limitations to the material world. For example, Gaudí may have may not have never seen this church finished, 
he has already died some time ago. But there are also buildings that were never even built. This building he also designed. It would be the largest building in New York, but it was never completed. It was never even started. There is limitations to what we can accomplish. We try to build larger buildings. Every year we hear some, con some country coming up with a new largest building in the world. And every year we, we see new buildings rise. But we try and do many things as human beings. We have put a man on the moon, but we have still uh, looking and learning about the art that we have and still know so little about, which is the art of training the mind. And the mind is actually much more competent than materials. The mind can be trained and be developed much more than anything in the material world. So there's a lot more potential in the mind and that it's a lot more uh, important to try to develop the mind than to build the largest buildings in the world or to put the man on the moon. But in order to train the mind, we need also to develop discipline, clarity of mind and wisdom. They must go hand in hand. And this is the reason why the novice Pandita had first had to learn discipline being a novice before he could attain to inner experience in meditation. It also shows that if, when we are ready to meditate uh, and we are meditating very well, sometimes, sometimes, especially when we meditate very much more deeper than normal, we sometimes we just need to take some time for ourselves and give everything up, let everything go, let everything be. And we might sometimes even choose to sleep a little less or not sleep at all if our meditation is very good. But this is only in the case when our meditation is, is different than other days. We can maybe choose to give some things up and we should actually because any day that our meditation is a lot better than other days, that may be the day that we can grow. And there may be reach a point that will have a remaining value in our lives, that will have a sustainable uh, effect on our mind and character. So this is why in Buddhism we say the Dhamma takes care of those who practice it. That means that when we take good care of meditation, the meditation will also take good care of us. And uh, the world seems to help us when we are ready for that moment. So this is the story of the Venerable, of the Novice Pandita. It's a little story, but it's very valuable. And it's traditionally always taught in our temple to any little child or any young child that is becoming a novice, whether it's a temporary ordination or whether it's a long-term ordination. So this is uh, what I'd like to talk about today. Do any of you, if any of you have any questions that you'd like to ask, you should feel free to ask this now and uh, I can uh, answer you. And you can uh, ask the question on the chat uh, 